going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Vile Files. I'm your host, Nick. I'm in New York. Allie and Amanda are all the way over in L.A. How you ladies doing? Far away across the country, thriving. Uh, I miss you guys. It would be nice to get back to L.A. I know. I feel like we haven't seen you in years yeah it makes me so sad looking to this like empty patch of studio (laughs) where like usually you and the guest are and i'm like oh yeah i feel like we've been you know recording good content but it's just not quite the same Mm -hmm. in in person with with the with the room intact so to speak uh we have a great episode for you the one the only kit keenan is with us uh you might know kit from bachelor nation on uh, matt james's season I've gotten to know Kit a little bit. I've uh, been following her career. She is uh, one of my more favorite people from Bachelor Nation. She's done a great job of kind of separating herself, doing her own thing, and more importantly, doing her own thing. And I follow her on TikTok. She's a, a classic New Yorker, wise beyond her years. Um, and uh, she wanted to come on, talk about relationships and, and pop culture. And I was like, yeah, come on in. And so well, you'll really enjoy this episode with Kit. She's a ton of fun. I'm glad to have uh, been able to catch, catch up with her on this show. Um, uh, big announcement, Tino will be with us next week. We are set to record on Sunday. He has confirmed with me a couple times. So barring any unforeseen developments, Tino will be finally getting his chance to speak next Thursday. And we look forward to having him on. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. Uh, anything, ladies, that you want to update us with? One thing I would like to talk about is this iconic art exhibit from an artist named Audrey Burke. Shout out, Audrey, uh, which was she turned all of the unsolicited dick pics she received into she recreated them with graphite uh, and made it a whole um, art exhibit called Unsolicited. And I think that's so iconic. Genius. And cool. Genius idea. How many dicks picked? How many dick pics did she get? 15 piece show. OK, so 15 different dicks. So we're talking a minimum of 15 dicks. It happens. Did any of the guys come back and be like, that's my dick? I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a brilliant move because who's gonna come back and and out themselves as an unsolicited dick? Also, every time you get an unsolicited dick pic, I feel like there's always a question of like if it's actually theirs. I've always questioned that. How many dick pics do you feel like you how many have you gotten? Mm, Probably like ten, maybe. In your life? Yeah. This year. (laughs) But I got one one time and he literally had like a cock ring on. And I was like, why would I don't feel like this is you. Like, I don't feel like this is like a photo that you've just taken. But uh, I mean, uh, this is like from the Internet. But a guy with a cock ring is definitely like taking pictures of his dick. I'm pretty sure. I Never. I don't even know what his name was. I'm pretty sure. I don't don't know. It was a quick unmatch. (laughs) Well, great for what's the artist's name? Audrey. Audrey Burke. Audrey, great, great taking a, a, a ne- turning a negative into a positive. Uh, also, uh, Don't Text Your Ex, Happy Birthday is available on sale. We talk a little bit about it in this book, uh, in this episode. More importantly, it turns out our texting office hour person has read it. But I hope you guys check it out. Super happy with uh, how people have been responding to it. Again, if you're out there dating, I promise you, it's a good read, even if you're not, if you're in a relationship of any kind. There's something for everyone. It's a easy read. It's like a manual for like referring back to various aspects of your relationship. And there's some fun anecdotal stories about me. And it feels like a one-on-one conversation. So I truly hope you give it a, a shot. Uh, go to vilefiles.com. Uh, and there's a link for, you know, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, indie bookstores, Audible, or and it's me reading it. So please check it out. Please. Yeah. I said please. Uh, and don't forget, tomorrow, the episode number two of our special Ask Nick update show uh, is tomorrow, Friday. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, we appreciate everyone who uh, supported the first update show. It seemed like people really enjoyed it. So we're bringing you a second one. So make sure to tune into that. Tell your friends updates from Ask Nick episodes, texting office hours. You won't want to miss that. That is tomorrow on Friday. And again, don't forget, Tino, next Thursday. Kit Keenan, everybody. Kit, welcome. Hey, what's up? How are you? Good. Good to be with you. Yeah, Good I'm so you. excited to be back on. Yeah, we're excited to have you. I asked Kit to, uh, I wanted to see, I was in town, I was like, do you want to watch Bachelor in Paradise? She was like, I'm not watching. And then Kit was like, but I'll come on and talk relationships and dating with you. And I was like, you know what? Come on, you know? Like, I don't 
typically have a bachelor alum on going deeper if they're not talking about a breakup. But I was like, I feel like I like your TikTok. You have a lot to say. You're like really insightful. Like, let's catch up with Kit. Let's see what she's up to. I feel like I'm in this time in my life where I'm just like really figuring it out. Like I started reading your book and there's a lot in there that I'm like, wow, this is what I'm going through right now. Like I'm I'm 23. So I'm like just really starting to like date seriously right now. Like I'm not necessarily looking for that. I'm looking for like happiness, joy, someone to experience life with at this moment and maybe someone to fall in love with, but not like my forever person necessarily. I don't have that pressure on me yet. So I feel like I'm at like a really interesting, like pivotal point dating wise. I think that's smart. It's great. I mean, I think for a lot of people, I mean, like this book, if you're looking for that, I, I, I would say this book is for anyone. Like it, it just depends on what you're looking for. And if mm-hmm. you're looking for a serious relationship, I think this mind, like this book can certainly like lead you down a path too. And someone in your position right now, what I love about what you just said is you know what you want, mm-hmm. right? Like, I think there's a lot of people in any aspect of their life, regardless of their age, will, you know, they, there's only like one goal, mm-hmm. you know, and that goal is to like, I guess society tells us like, I'm going to be married and have kids someday. I think that pressure is even more so on women too, where men, it's just like, yeah, yeah, take my time or whatever. But I love that you right now know what it is you're looking for, which is just, it sounds like to get to know people. And yeah. To date. And, and I feel like that's part of it. I think like I do know kind of what I want, but like in general, I'm just like, I want to experience like dating right now. Yeah. And I, I do want to experience falling in love, but I'm not necessarily like looking for anything solid or like specific necessarily. If I fall in love and have a boyfriend, amazing. If not, that's okay. And like the people that I'm dating and meeting, I'm like, okay, I just I just have fun with you. So like, let's continue this. So how do you go about, because you came in and you were just like, I, I gr- agree a lot with your definition of fuck boy, but kind of you had some like yeah. other. And my question to you is, we can go into the discussing fuck boys, but my question to you is how do you, Kit, mm-hmm. go about not having anyone think of you as a fuck boy with like the you know because that and like yeah. what you what you're saying right now i've had a lot of you know a lot of guy friends will say that's that same thing it's like yeah if i meet someone great you know if i fall in love fine but i'm out there meeting people and honestly like doing what you're doing now is i think that's great everyone should have that moment but i'm just a big believer right now with hookup culture and the way people are communicating unless we're unless we communicate you're you're bound to have someone like you more than you like them mm-hmm. and you you know maybe you guys hook up or maybe you just hang out for a period of time and maybe there's some excitement early on and then maybe feelings change and then maybe you go a different direction they're just like what the fuck you know like you said this you said that so how do you go about communicating and and making sure that as you, as you go around meeting guys and 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 getting to know them and then you know, moving on because it's like, hey, you know, you're nice, you're cool, but like, you're not my person. Like, how do you go about not being someone's fuck boy? I'm like, now I'm like scared that I'm a fuck boy. <laughs> but um, I, I think everyone in hookup culture has the potential to be one. Yeah. No, I don't think I am because I do communicate like exactly what I want most of the time. Like, I would say, like, over the summer, I had like a cute summer fling, which is exactly what I wanted. And like from the beginning, we had a conversation. We were like, okay, we just want to spend the summer with someone and like go out together, have fun, like be in the Hamptons together, whatever. And I was like, I will never like this person like enough to think that like one day they might be my boyfriend. And I think like if you're in that that situation, like why would you want to be with somebody who doesn't like you that much? So when you were having this thought of like... Now, when did you communicate that to him? Well, in, the in, the in the beginning, we were just like, we don't want this to be anything okay. serious. And and it never changed for either of you. Yeah. And it was like, That's great. great. I mean, win. I was like, so I was like heartbroken over a situation chip at the beginning of the summer. 
And then like in the middle of the summer, I was like, okay, I need to just like get over this. And so it was really nice to have like open communication with somebody right from the beginning that like we just wanted something like fun and casual. And I had never really done that before. And then I was like, okay, this is not a fuck boy. Like this person, maybe other people would think that they are a fuck boy because they are like dating multiple women and whatever, whatever. But I think like the huge distinction between somebody who's just kind of like a like a guy that just sleeps with a lot of girls, gets around, and a guy that's actually a fuckboy is people that like a fuckboy will tell you that they like you or won't say anything. And a guy that just like gets around will make it clear to you that that's what it is from yeah, the beginning. I think, to, yeah, I would generally agree. Because I don't think, I agree with you, I don't think a fuckboy means you have f lots of sex. Like, yeah. we're living in a sex-positive world in a sense. We're, hookup culture is a thing. Like, women are empowered to have sex more and more now, which is great. Men have been <laughs> having sex. <laughs> They've been empowered for a while. And yeah, I, I don't, I think that makes someone a player, right? I think, and when I get in the, in the book about it, but yeah. like a fuckboy, because I think to that person, it, like you said, if you just communicate up front mm -hmm. and check in, then you have less likely of a chance for somebody to think of you as a fuckboy. Because I think at the end of the day, you know how people say perception is reality. I think when it comes to fuckboys, it's up to the person. Because like you go around and it's just like, they were a fuckboy, right? Like no one's calling, them, most people aren't calling themselves fuckboys. You know, they're not naming themselves. It's other people naming us or, you know, us yeah, naming yeah. other people fuckboys. And so what I'm saying is like, people are more likely to call you a fuckboy. Like you said, when they're like, when they, you know, I really like you. And not, I don't think most people who are being fuckboys are deliberately saying, well, I like you with, and they're lying about it. They're just being in the moment, being like, I, this is This is great. Good. Yeah, I like this you. Feels like, you good. look good. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Like, you're talking about your family. It seemed great. Like, maybe we should go on a trip. And I really like you. And then, like, three, you know, and they're not talking about, they're just like, I totally want to get married someday. Mm -hmm. Like, every fuckboy wants to get married someday and have a family. Brooklinen, eighth wonder of the world. Brooklinen knows that a good set of sheets are essential for all the bedroom activities. That's right. Bedding from the home of the internet's favorite sheets and my favorite sheets, more importantly, Brooklinen. Fall has officially arrived and Brooklinen knows that color temperature means more time spent cuddling under the covers with a good book and your favorite cuffing season snacks. Lucky for you, Brooklinen's soft, cozy home essentials offer everything you need to feel warm, fuzzy all winter long. So whether it's their incredible loungewear, like everyone should be wearing when they're just like chilling, especially fall, cozy, when it's raining and cold, just wear that Brooklinen loungewear. It's amazing. Plus, have the best sheets, hand towels, bath towels in the world. I am so glad that Brooklyn has entered my life. I'm a Brooklyn customer for life. I truly am. I feel like a mature person who has high quality things without spending a ton of money. And you don't have to take my word for it. They have 100,000 five-star reviews, 100,000 five-star reviews. I wish this show had 100,000 five-star reviews. The Brooklyn and Soft Cozy Home Essentials offer you everything you need to feel warm and fuzzy all winter long. Well, what more can I say? It's like, it's just, they have best. They have great colors, great options. Do you give covers, all season comforters? Their towels, I will say the I don't know how else to describe them other than they kind of have this like waffle knit pattern. Yeah, that's great. They're not only cozy and soft, but they're so like they absorb so much and my hair is so thick so when I come out of the shower like I'm like okay well I'll just have wet hair for hours and I took one pass through of that Brooklyn and towel it's basically like a sham wow it's all gone check out brooklinen.com today for their luxury home and bedding essentials and use promo code v-i-a-l-l-f-i-l-e-s that's vile files for twenty dollars off plus free shipping on your purchase of $100 or more, that's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com, promo code V-I-A-L-L-F-I-L-E-S for $20 off plus free shipping. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey, listen, therapy is essential. It's important. It's also expensive. And it's just stressful to find a good therapist. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. They've been a friend of the show since its inception. I'm proud to say that we partner with them because they're doing great things when it comes to the space of mental health. 
Again, in-person therapy can be super expensive. BetterHelp makes it more affordable. Uh, they're working with a th literally thousands of the therapists. They're getting new therapists every day, making it super easy to connect you with a therapist when you need. You can literally be talking to a therapist in less than 48 hours if you're listening to this ad right now. And I'm sure most of you, many of you out there have wondered, considered therapy. You've wondered about the cost. You've worried about it. it's too expensive. Listen, let's make the investment in our mental health. If our mental health isn't right, then like what else can be right? I mean, it's a, such a challenge. We're so quick to get those gym memberships. We're quick to invest into like clothes. We're so quick to invest in our entertainment, investing your mental health. Because when you have that, so many other things are possible. Whether you're stressed about work, have anxiety about relationships, money problems, or maybe just need someone to talk to, just let things out. BetterHelp is there for you. You can talk to a therapist in the convenience of your car and your lunch break through your phone, your tablet, your computer, from your home. It doesn't matter. You can do it face to face. You can do it just simply without like having them see you. If you don't like the therapist they connect you with, doesn't matter. You can find someone new the next time. It's super easy. It's super convenient. It's all about getting you the therapy you need with the right therapist that connects with you, that understands you, makes you feel seen. And and BetterHelp can do all that. It's super incredible. All you do have to do. Go to BetterHelp.com, take a quick quiz, let them know that what, you're what you're looking for. And again, you can be talking to a mental health professional within a matter of days. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Viofiles today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Viofiles. What do you think about going on trips with people before you're officially boyfriend and girlfriend? I think it all comes down to like boundaries and expectations, like your summer fling. Like yeah. you said, like you you said you two talked about like we're gonna hang out for the summer, maybe because we enjoy each other's company, we roam in the same circles. I don't know what your guys' parameters were, but it sounds like you communicated that. Yeah. And and it sounded like it ended pretty amicably with no one like really being hurt. I just like we just don't talk anymore and that's like fine with me. Yeah, is it fine with him too? I would assume so. Yeah, because you guys talked about yeah. that. So like feelings can change all the time. But I think when I think people make the mistake of meeting someone and if they're going to say take a trip early on, they take a trip without having a conversation of what that trip means to them. Mm. They will decide for themselves what they think the trip means to them and for the other person. Mm -hmm. Or like meeting someone's family. Like some people it's just like, I don't know, I hang out with my family all day. I'm going to my family's house. Do you want to meet my family? They're like, oh, you're meeting you're introducing my your family? And they're like, I mean, sure, yeah, but like I just yeah. it's not a big deal. Other people it's like this momentous event. Same thing with trips. Well, I live with my mom, so everyone meets my mom. Exactly, right? And I wonder, like, if people, like, think sometimes, like, oh, my God. My yeah. yeah. No, I don't think so, because my mom is, like, so... My mom likes everyone. Like, I wish she had, like, more discernment on the men that I introduce her to, because sometimes, most of the time, she's just like, oh, my God, I love him. Like, he makes you happy. Like, love that for you. She's always on their side. <laughs> like, I went on the worst date of my life, like, probably, like, this is, like, two years ago. And I came home from the date, and I was, like, really upset. Like, I was just, like, I give up on dating. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. The guy was just, like, not, like, in person, like, I wasn't attracted to him. And then, like, he just, like, did, like, eating with him was, like, gross. And <sighs> it was just, like, a lot of different things that, like, I was just, like, ugh, I don't, I don't want to do this. Like, this is not fun or exciting, you know? And I was, like, just getting back into dating. And I, I had that one date. And I came home. And I was, like... I'm so upset, like, he did this and this and this, and it, like, gave me the ick, and my mom was, like, and immediately, like, how do you know where, like, how he was raised, like, he's probably, like, a wonderful person, like, he just took you out on this date, like, but she's always on the other person's side. I think just because she wants me to be in a relationship, it's not that helpful sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, just be on my side. Does your does your mom know? I mean, I was gonna joke and say, does your mom know you're in your fuckboy era? But I don't mean it like. But you're in your you're you're getting to know people era. I'm in my getting to know people era, but like at the end of the day, like I am a simp. Like I will, I always have like one person that I'm like, oh yeah, I like them more than everyone else. Really? You always yeah. have a favorite on the roster. There's is always that, a favorite. Is that a common thing yes. with a lot of women? 
Yeah. Well, I think if you, I think if you're in a position of hooking up with multiple people, you tend to have someone who there's like a, a little bit more of an attachment to, even if you don't want to admit it <laughs> or like yeah. from personal experience when I don't want to admit it. <laughs> Nally goes, you were my favorite. And she kind of like sneakily kind of implies that, you know, there were other men because there were. Um, there should be. Is- that's fine. Like yeah. that's that's called dating around. Yeah. Yeah. Are you when you're dating around? Do you? Someone's just like someone asks you like, who are you dating other people? What do mm-hmm. you say? Yes. You say yes. Great. Yeah. I, I, if somebody's not my boyfriend, then of course I'll say yes. Yeah. You know, some people might be like, uh, you know, not like like a lot of people are not that good with that be, type of con. Conf- that would be so. I'm not dating anyone who I've. That's never happened to me before. Interesting. And so. How do you determine your favorite versus like they're just the top of the roster versus like someone that like maybe they could be the one? I feel like it's just like time. Like a lot of it is time because you can like add someone to the roster who's newer and you might like them. But like at the end of the day, if you've spent time with some more time with somebody else and you're just more comfortable with them, like I don't know that that like means a lot like it's hard to be added to the roster later in the game yeah but how are you like because like think about it like a basketball game okay. like one person has already been playing you know sure. they're they're they've been like scoring you know they've been playing the game then somebody just gets added to the bench and like you're gonna try to throw them into the game just then like that's a lot of pressure it is, but sometimes they rise to the occasion and hit know, the game winning shot you know for <laughs> using know. basketball I have like <laughs> Like not as much belief in that, I guess. Yeah. But it doesn't, it seems like right now they're just all, they're all just kind of on the roster. But like right now, unless you but get really star, surprised, I, you have a star a, there's player. There's an MVP. Yeah. You do. Yeah. But I think there needs to, there's not really like a most valuable player in like single player sports. Like you need to have, you know, multiple people. On a team, to yeah. choose your favorite. Okay, you're a big believer in and in... and don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay, and like I think the comparison thing like is really helpful. Yeah, because like you might not, or I might not think like, oh my god, I have a hard time getting in touch with my feelings in general. So I think sometimes I'll just like have my wall up with somebody for a while until I might go on another date with somebody else, and I'll just be like, whoa, this is not the same. Mm. Like, I really miss that person. Have you ever been heartbroken? Kind of. I don't I don't think I've had, like, that devastation yet. But I've been, like, really sad about someone for, like, months and months. Okay. Yeah. That counts. Yeah. And why do you think that was really sad versus heartbroken? I mean, that's probably not heartbroken in the way, like, some people who might be listening go, if you don't know if you're heartbroken, then you weren't heartbroken. Yeah. But, like, what were you sad about in that situation? I was, I was more sad because this was not – a relationship that like we were in it we decided to break up because all of my like actual boyfriends which there were only two those those breakups just kind of like happen like nicely like agreeably like I don't think this is going much further or like life changes college whatever but this was like something like that could have been something and like we were seeing each other for like a few months and then it just like he like moved kind of and like kind of like ghosted me not actually ghosted me and like he'll still call me like every once in a while but like I was just like whoa this is like crazy like I just lost someone who I thought could someday be my boyfriend and but do you I feel was, like, like you thought you thought it. that after he left morally more than while yes, it was happening definitely yeah. Yeah. but that's a pretty projection also like on him yeah i mean it was probably just more combination of my guess is you know you don't know realize what you had until you lost it and then that rejection of he didn't give you the courtesy of that proper goodbye so yeah. to speak and you know it was it was his call and not yours but you know? do you okay do you even think that you don't know what you have until you lost it exists I don't really think that exists. I mean, technically, mean? like, I don't think that's right. Because it, if you didn't like them when they were right in front of you, like, then I don't think it really makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, and Natalie's looking at me because she had to, she had to say goodbye before I finally committed. Ashley and Jared famously uh, on Paradise, she had to date someone else before Jared Ooh. finally woke up. I see your point. I think that can be true. I think it really depends. I think if it's someone who's just more from a casual dating standpoint, like, you know, mm-hmm. I get why you're saying, because right now you're just kind of like, I've had a lot of, 
I've met a lot of nice guys. I've had some nice times with some nice people. But right now, my it's it, it's about me, which that's great. I mm-hmm. like you know I don't think there's anything wrong with being selfish. I think it's just great to know when you it's your time to be selfish and then communicate that with people that right now like you're making decisions for yourself more than anything. Like and that people know, right? Mm-hmm. I think in other situations, I do think sometimes people can get in their head, and we live in a in a dating climate where the next the idea of the next best thing is around the corner even if you're not even consciously thinking that or or maybe you're just afraid of or you've been you know in my case I was single for a really long time I had all these serious relationships in my early 20s I finally got comfortable with being like you know what I don't I don't need someone to feel validated you know in, in my 20s I was just like I if I don't have a girlfriend I'm a loser you know that's kind of how I felt that's about myself so Rare. Yeah. <laughs> I've never um, met a guy in his 20s that feels like that. I feel like it's because he grew up in New York and I grew up yeah. in the Midwest. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, but um, that's how I felt. And then I got really comfortable with it. And then I just had a hard time figuring out, you know, I remember I met, you know, dated some nice people, you know, it was great. But it was just like, I don't know what I need to feel to to let's say this is, I want to make take this risk with you, right? And yeah. because when I was younger, it would be like, I just felt something. I was like, I'd hey, be my girlfriend, you know? And so for me, I needed the, the wake up call, I guess, you know, a, a little bit of a, I needed to realize what I was about to say goodbye to, right? For, to, you know, and I still didn't have all my answers, my, all my questions answered. I just knew it was worth the risk. You know, yeah, and it was this like her kind of standing her ground and and saying, you know, it was fu- we hey, we did this thing, it was fine, I was fine for a while, I was also having fun, but you know, Nally communicated like my feelings have evolved and they've changed, and I no longer want to do what we're doing, and mm-hmm. and if you want me in your life, you have to like step up, and like I. I needed her to really like. I'm so scared to do that. Oh my god! Yeah, I needed her to really like, like turn like off the baller. spigot. Yeah, no, she she was a baller, but like I, I I hate like I you know Jared for example like Jared's harder on himself than me, but Jared feels genuine embarrassment. Like he's ashamed of himself that Ashley had to do that, but Ashley had to do that for him to like be like, what am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? You know? Yeah. And and um, so it, I think if you I think for a lot of people, you know, I think nowadays we're, it is getting confusing to figure out, well, you know, like, especially when like, for me, like I wrote this book of all these things of why you shouldn't like, you know, if you get excited, that's great. But like, ask questions, get to know people, take the time, like, you know, like don't sit there and just be like, oh, I had one really good date, like me, you know, stuff like that. Right. The only downside of this mentality is, you know, sometimes you're just like, well, it's it's so pragmatic, mm-hmm. you know? So you sometimes need to kick in the pants is what I'm saying. I think the other thing is like, as you get older, you, you're thinking to yourself like, whoa, this could be the last person I date, you know? Whereas for me, I'm like, <laughs> I've thought okay, that like this probably 10 my, times. This could be my boyfriend, but like, I doubt that this is going to be the last person I date. How my, here's my question for you. You talk like someone who has a, a lot of perspective. And I write about that in the book because I'm someone who, and I think most people are more like me than like you when they're younger. I don't think I had any perspective. You know, everything was the biggest fucking deal in the world. It's like, this has to happen now. When I turned 25, I had like a nervous breakdown about how old I was. And I just lacked perspective. And, and the little bit I've gotten to know you, you have incredible perspective and a real strong sense of who you are. And I don't think most people at 23 do. I mean, Natalie is some, like Natalie does, but like, you know, that's really hard to find. Where do you get that perspective from, do you think? Well, I think, honestly, this is going to sound like kind of bad, but I think it's a blessing and a curse to have parents like yours that you write about in the book that like your parents are like the ideal standard of like marriage. And I never had that my whole life. Like my biological dad and my mom got divorced when I was one. And my mom had already been married once before that. My Then my mom had me when she was 40, got divorced from my dad, remarried my sister's dad, had my sister, and now they're getting divorced. So like my mom and her like relationships have taught me like a lot of perspective in the sense that like sometimes things don't work out and that's okay. And, like, everything is on your timeline, too. Yeah. Like, she had kids way later in life, which she's always, literally, since I was younger, she's like, 
you got to start having kids early. I don't care about like anything else, but I want grandkids. So I don't know. No, you're that, right. You make a great point. That part is like funny. And I think she's kind of joking. Like she's not actually putting like extra pressure on me. But like I do think that it's a blessing and a curse to have like a perfect example because you're always just like, oh, my God, I need to have that. No, you're absolutely right. Whereas, like, for me, I'm like, okay, I, I mean, I would love to have that. That's obviously, like, the goal. But I also am more, like, realistic in the, that some things don't work out. I think you're, you're spot on. I mean, my, I, again, very grateful for my parents and their marriage and the love that they have in my childhood. But, like, yeah, I, I spent a lot of, of my energy when I was younger trying to live up to what they had. And when it didn't work out early on, I, I couldn't deal with the disappointment in, in myself. And here you are, like, I, I guess seeing your mom go through it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, always picking herself back up, living a, living her best life, mm -hmm. you know, thriving, yeah. rebounding, you know, like, you know, one moment it's like, this sucks, but I, now I have this, you know, like that perspective of handling disappointment with kind of a more positive outlook. And that's, yeah, I yeah. think you nailed it. And I think like my biological dad is like literally such a simp and like he's a cancer and like he just like, is very in tune with his emotions. And he's been married a, f a few times too. And he is just always like, the best thing in the world is love. Like you need to just like go for the love and like everything else, the labels, the like marriage, all of that stuff, the kids, like that's amazing. But like go for the love first because it's like actually the most amazing thing in the world. And I get that, but I'm definitely like I'm more realistic and like I want what I want. Like I would love to have things on a certain timeline, but I know I'm going to be OK regardless. Like I know, I'm not putting all my value in like having a perfect marriage and kids by the time I'm 30. Yeah, that's great. I'm listening to you kind of envious. I wish I had that mindset when I was in my 20s. It's, it would You have to like you have to have fun now. Yeah, I just didn't. I yeah. Mean, I was always like, I got to find it, you know? And yeah. I was like, once I find it, then I can enjoy life. But I just remember putting all this pressure on myself. And I, f I think that's, you know, maybe in New York, it's a little different. I don't, I don't know. Or maybe you're, do you have the benefit of, of having parents that just, you know, through their own struggles really taught you to, you know, value yourself or, or invest in yourself. Yeah. And then it sounds like sometimes too much. Yeah. And maybe that's where that will be your battle, right? Yeah. It sounds like you'll, you might struggle. Like I, you know, it took me later in life where I struggled. I had to figure out, well, wait, how do I do want this? I do want the family. I do want to settle down. I want kids. I want to, you know, have my person. I, I really got to like, I, I still got, I have to figure out what that is. And it was harder for me to do that later on because I had that kind of practical mindset of, you know, it'll all work out. It'll figure it out. Then I was like, well, now I have to like really pick it, right? I have to. I have. I almost had to reverse engineer it. And yeah, maybe maybe that that maybe that'll be your struggle. I also think the picker thing, like it comes from fear. Like I'm scared to pick wrong, and then like for my picker to be off, yeah. and then to get hurt. So I would rather just not pick. <laughs> Yeah, that might be something. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't I don't know. It's not for me to something say. Something to deal but, with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel lucky having had my heart crushed, but I don't like wish that on anyone, but it does it changes you for definitely yeah. for the best, but it definitely change it changes you. So yeah, maybe one of these days is you know say fuck it, go all in, see what happens. Yeah, either way, you're gonna live. Yeah, true. I feel like you're gonna be just fine. Yeah, yeah. I feel like one of the other things that's kind of scary about the picker situation is not knowing how things will turn out down the line. Because I feel like it's just been on everyone's brains. Like all of these power couples who we thought were like very solid are suddenly like shaky. Like the Tom Brady kid. Have you been following the Tom Brady Giselle Bündchen divorce rumors? Yes, I have. Have you? A little bit. They're getting, it seems like getting divorced. It seems like That's pretty, crazy. you know, she was seen at lawyers' offices. Like, it really seems like it's escalating. Um, and this mm -hmm. was after he'd previously um, missed practice in August, which he never does, um, was sort of when people first started to speculate whether their marriage was on the rocks. And now it's just really uh, snowballing. She hasn't been to his games. And I'm curious, like, what do you think, if you were Tom Brady, would you just, like, retire from football since that seems to be, at, like, kind of the heart of this is, like, her being, like, I've stunt raised our whole family for all these years. Yeah. I've... But what if there's other issues that we don't know about and then he retires and he has nothing 
and he's also divorced. That's possible. Like you got to keep the one other thing that you love. Yeah, I think we're making the assumption and to your, you're right. We don't really know. Yeah. And maybe it's not just football, but all the she was quoted as saying something to the effect of I've done my part. It was kind of a very mm-hmm. kind of poignant thing to say to put out there. And it just kind of reads as listen Tommy, you know, like for the past few years you've, you know, TB12 you, we changed cities for you. You won some Super Bowls. You told me you were going to retire. You retired, and a month later, you're back. And it, yeah, it sounds like it gives off the vibe, at least, that she might feel like she's been doing 100% of her half and 20% of his for a period of time. And it sounds like maybe she's decided to put her foot down. If that is the case, yeah, I, I have a hard time. Like, like, listen, to be as great as he is, you have to almost be a little nuts and crazy, right? To be as exceptional as the Aaron Rodgers and the Tom Brady's, like, you're just wired differently, I think. You totally. know, but I think that comes at a price with your personal lives, you know? And I don't know if he knows how to retire. I, al- That's I what almost I was feel gonna sad. Say, like, I don't think, like, I think with a lot of those greats, like, it's so hard because they just want, they're just so comfortable with, like, everything that comes with being the best. Yeah, walking out. But, like, give it up. Yeah. You, like, you've, you you've won. literally it's accomplished everything. It's like somebody everything. who, like, can't leave a poker table. Yeah. You know? Mm. Like, they have to just keep winning. But there's that Jay-Z quote that's like, even my own fans, like, old, old man, just stop. I could if I would, but I can't. I'm hot. It's like, he will never stop. <laughs> But that's different because it's it's an art form that you can do forever. Football is not something that you can really put your body through forever. True. But even art, too. Like sometimes maybe you're more in a creative space than you were before. Maybe try to put out some art and it's just like, ooh, like you should have yeah. stopped, you know? I think that, that line is, is great because it makes, like you have to, you know, you could argue that football's art in a sense, right? But like you almost have to respect the art or respect the game to the point of which, you know, like... It, you had your moment and mm-hmm. now you're holding on, you know, and, and listen, he's still a great quarterback, but it's just like, if it's all about, if this is the primary problem, it's, it's a really sad ending potentially to an otherwise impeccable career for Tom Brady. I mean, it's truly been almost Immaculate. flawless. The like, rings. Yeah. Like the one time he got suspended for like the flake eight, he just came back and won a Super Bowl that year. Like, you know, like that just added to the, the brilliance that was Tom Brady. And like, this seemingly picturesque family, and they he he's gonna potentially lose that because you can't just give but then, it up. Then you lose everything. Yeah, and you can't do football forever. Right. And Thomas looked in his in his in his pref conference. He just looks he just looks off like mentally. Mm, totally. Well, and like Serena it's, Williams is such a good example of someone who was a literal like the greatest of all time has a, an incredible career, but stepped away. And she doesn't use the word retire. She used what's the word? It's like it's not retire, but basically like pivoting to something else. And she's like, I just love being a mom and I want to be the greatest mom of all time and I want to grow my family like she just has different priorities and she'll channel her love for tennis into other things but I think Tom needs to find the the problem and that's you're right you bring up and like it's credit to her because like Tom Brady running out of the tunnel every Sunday and having everyone cheer for you. Like being on The Bachelor or just whatever, you're you're ben- you're given a couple moments that are just it's just a just a minuscule of what like the Tom Brady's of the world get to or the Jay Z's get to experience. But when you walk in a room and people are screaming your name, it's like a drug. It's this really mm-hmm. insane feeling. And he's been getting that drug for the past 20 some years but he'll always be tom brady but not for football i don't know i i we're on the same page yeah. i'm just trying to like empathize of why it's been such a struggle for him or why i think why these athletes do struggles i do like i don't i'm surprised there's not more like documentaries on that in just terms of like and maybe there will and maybe we should do it i don't know like we're talking about mental health but just the 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 transition from greatness to like normalcy on some level mm-hmm. is I think an incredibly challenging transition it, for people. And I think it's incredibly sad one for, for a lot of them. It's so hard. But I think you need to have like a second career almost. Like you need to get super curious about something else yeah. and then just like become the best at that. Well, he already signed like a $250 million deal to like call football games, but maybe that's just like, that's, yeah. Maybe and maybe that's exactly the opposite of what you're suggesting because that's still in the football space. He just has to watch the games instead of playing the game. Yeah, I feel like Tom Brady needs to like completely separate himself 
and find a new passion that he can be the best in the world at. You yeah, know, just get like that, super into gardening, Tom. I you know? literally yeah, yeah, right? like, we put like, him on HGTV. <laughs> like, let's right? just put Interior him in that Interior design or yeah. something, sculpting. I, I don't know, yeah. something. Pottery. Pottery. <laughs> I'm seeing pottery in his future. Yeah, and that would be great. Like kind of closing question on this is I found the quote you were referencing, Nick, which is Giselle saying, I've done my part, which is to be there for Tom. I moved to Boston and I focused on creating a cocoon and a loving environment for my children to grow up in and to be there supporting him and his dreams. Do you think it's sustainable for couples to kind of take turns supporting one another's dreams? Or do you think they have to create an infrastructure where they can happen, that happens simultaneously? I think realistically, I think as someone who's never been married, and so what the fuck do I know? But everything I've been taught is marriage is a really long, like forever is a long fucking time, you know? And I think it would be great and ideal to be like, you know, we're always balancing each other out all the time, mm -hmm. always. But like, I don't think that is realistic. And given that marriage is, you know, meant to be forever, I think realistically there might be moments where it's just like, hey, you know, like sometimes there's couples where like, you know, one one of the partners goes back to school while the other one like raises the kids and work or something like that. That doesn't seem equitable or, or the same. And there might be like someone feeling like overworked while the other one's really investing in themselves and hope that that investment pays off. Like, I think that's normal. I just think... I think, yeah, I think at times it, it, can ha it can happen temporarily. It's just not sustainable. If you're going to be setting these boundaries and expectations with each other, you, you can't do what Tom did. Because I think it's that reneging on the agreement you had. Like he retired. And I'm assuming that choice to retire was a mutual decision he made with his wife. And there were probably conversations about like what they were like plans they had. And then he did it. And that, that must have felt like a real Crushing. betrayal. Yeah. Totally. Well, speaking of yeah. betrayals, what do we think Adam Levine and Bahati were seen at? I feel bad. I cannot say her last name. I get so intimidated by the vowels. Um, but they were seen at the beach just like having a nice family day recently. This comes after, of course, like the big Sumner hurrah scandal. And one, do you think it's okay to have an opinion on whether someone takes a partner back, like after some form of infidelity or lines being crossed in that area? Like not just on celebrities, but like on friends. Like, do you think it's valuable and worthwhile and appropriate to communicate how you feel about their partner post that breach of Well, the trust? difference between having an opinion and communicating it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't think it's fine to have an it's opinion. We have opinions, but... I, I mean, you just... Yeah. Like, it's natural to have judgments yeah. on everything. Um, so I guess But to your point, it. is it appropriate to communicate to a friend? Uh, well, I think the first question is, I think it's appropriate now to have... Start asking the question, do we think they're in some sort of non-traditional relationship? Well, that's what I was going to say. I was like, is it even necessarily taking him back? Or did she know about this the whole time? Like, we don't know that she was necessarily betrayed by any of these DMs. Like, she yeah, could like, be doing the same what's that, thing Octum's for being Optimus Razor or whatever, like, the most simplest explanation is often the right one. And it's like, based on what we know, it's like, we know a lot of people in Hollywood or, you know, these elite circles kind of have these non-traditional kind of some sort of openness to their marriages. Mm -hmm. Like, that that's a thing. She was, you know, his comment of, I did not have an affair, you know, but he didn't deny the DMs, but he was like, I did not have an affair. An affair can only happen if one person feels betrayed by the other yeah. person. Just Ooh, because you're fucking point. other people or sliding in DMs, it, like, if you have a boundary that allows that to happen, then there's no affair. So do you think he and, just said crossed a line in his statement to appease everybody who was, like, giving him shit? Well, listen, I mean, he's Adam Levine, and so not everyone has these types of relationships. And, like, mainstream, like, you know, middle America. and, and Or regardless, even if she just decided, like, I love you and I forgive you. We, that's I possible, have no too. clue. I think it's like, I was talking to one of my friends about this the other day. Like, I think it's just like so interesting how they are like being so seen right now together. I think it, yeah, it's, it's deliberate. And yeah. I think it's more likely that she's like, I don't want to like, she's, she's probably, I think what she is most pissed at is people judging her. Totally. Right? Even though they might have had an agreement, but she doesn't want, like, because he was so sloppy. If they are in any type of non-traditional relationship, like, you can be in one. You don't want the, the judgy fucking world to know. Yeah. It's like, hey, we, we're into this shit. You might tell your friends, but, like, I don't know if it's, like, good for, for their brand to, like, have that type of relationship. And now she... Like she's have, taking all of she's the, taking all of it. It's just like either yeah. she's the one who's like, you know, putting up with it or it's like, hey, now we have to tell the world we're in a like an open relationship. I don't want to do that, you know? Yeah. And so 
I feel like that's what's going on, but who knows? But I, they are clearly... Or maybe they'll just like be seen together now and like quietly never speak about it again. Yeah. And he hopefully won't like be so public about whatever is going on. I just think on. he was so sloppy that he must have... I, I, he must on some level... Have known? Not been crossing a boundary with her. I could be wrong. I don't know. But like, I also think like he was so sloppy. Like, I'm always like, was this meant to like be... I don't know. Who knows? I mean, he DM Natalie. Oh my God. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, there was that. But like also the accept, very scary. The accept message, you know, he deleted it. Oh. Does Natalie remember what it said? You only notice it because like after it all happened, like everyone was like checking their DMs because if you if you DM someone and they unsend it, if you have never DM'd them, it, I don't know what it says. It doesn't say anything. Yes, if they DM'd you. If they don't, if you've never messaged someone, it just, it just it's just blank. But mm -hmm. if you DM someone and unsend it, it will still say, do you want to accept this message even though there's no message to accept? So Natalie That's didn't not see the original not one. Everyone. That's crazy. Yeah. I wonder what it said. Probably something like sus. It was probably something like, yeah, you're you're, you're unreal or something. Like <laughs> yeah. <that>. yeah. <laughs> Fucking um, unreal. But I'm convinced they had some sort of understanding that they don't want to say. And ultimately, there was no affair in their minds. So there's nothing to change. And now they're out there putting on a good face. and yeah. I yeah. would still be like just pissed about like the fuck yeah the he was sloppy public yeah knowledge he was fucking of sloppy everything. that's yeah. the thing is I feel like a lot of people in those positions it's just like do what you want to do whatever we have an understanding don't embarrass me yeah and he did yeah we were talking about don't worry darling Kit you saw it recently what I did saw you it think last night because we've been talking a lot about the Reviews. kind of yeah I loved it you loved it loved I've been wanting to see it for a while and my best friend and I are like both very early into relationships with people her the guy that she's seeing is 10 years older than her and the guy that I'm seeing is one year younger than me so they're like literally like 11 years apart or 12 years apart but I honestly think the guy that she's seeing is like way more immature than the one I'm seeing, which is very funny. Um, but we were supposed to go on a double date and like both see it. And then that didn't end up happening. So I went on like a, a movie date last night and I saw it, which does, I think, make you like a movie a little bit more if it's a date and you're with someone you like. You could hate it together. Yeah, you could. You could. But if it's like good, if it's a good movie, okay. you might be sitting there thinking, oh my God, this is the best movie I've ever seen. But I did in general. I really liked it. I thought Harry Styles was like- Yeah, how'd her boy do? Actually, incredible actor. I thought- like, there was so much talk. Oh, my God. He's like, why are they having this musician act in a movie? Like, he can't do or it all. he just got a job because his girlfriend's director. You know, there were yeah. critics saying that. I think... He deserved it. He's very talented. And I think he deserved it. Absolutely. So we should gotta, we gotta go he see it. He was also like really fun to look at on the I want to take the Ke Keenan recommendation because she was going to go see it with some friends and then she didn't go. And I was kind of like, you know what? I'll just wait for it to come out. Like I don't, I didn't have the guts to go see it without a, like a solid review. Yeah. Not too intense. There was like, I think there was like now two. Now how the sex scenes were. Two casual kind of sex scenes. One is like pretty fun and then the second one is like more low-key there might be a third but it's and definitely that, a good how is, like how date is that movie. on your date that's what i was gonna ask loved it yeah take some notes um did but, you make any comments at all was it awkward did it laugh like how did he respond i think there were like some slight comments made okay. during it right. <laughs> and like a little like laugh so how, how how long have we been hanging out with this guy? Probably like two months now. But like two this months. is somebody I knew for a while. But it sounds like maybe... Tried it kind of like once. Didn't really like happen. And then now it's like trying again a little. Who who made the first outreach? We saw each other during Fashion Week. Interesting. Yeah. Well, he had been reaching out like over that whole time. Take notes, ladies. But like you seem to really, you have that, it's that perspective that you have of, you. it seems like you know your time is valuable. Yeah. We had a whole conversation about that the other week. Yeah. That's my read on you is that like, you know, your time is valuable. And it, it takes, I think most people a long time to really realize that, how valuable their time is. And when they you know, and your energy is your time and your power and you only have so much energy in, in any day and we waste so much of that energy on people who don't deserve it and you seem to really have an understanding of, of how valuable your time is and uh, I think that's great. Yeah, 
I try. Yeah. Sometimes I like get a little lost on that. And you're human. And then I, yeah. You're human. And it's fun to like, you know, lose a little, you know, you get lose a little time. Get a little fucked up and there. have someone crush <laughs> yeah. your spirits. But um, yeah, if you can, uh, if you be like Kit, know, just know how valuable your time is. I do thought that study you sent was really interesting though. Oh, yeah, I read that. The um, kiss and make up. Yeah. Yeah. So it was basically um, a study of psychology today. The key points, as quoted by the article, are relationships are made up of positive and negatives, but the question is whether the positive can balance out the negative. And the research is showing that, indeed, positive no. perceptions of your partner can go very far in buffering, which is counter to what you say, Nick. Buffering. Yeah. Well, I think it just depends. Pop. It's it's a, it's a the rule break. It's the, Sorry. It's the difference between if it's like just a little thing, if it's an annoyance or if it's like a complete deal breaker. Yeah. I would want to know. I think most people, I think a lot of people will use some good moments to justify extreme bad moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think they're equitable or equal, you know, or they'll use good moments of ha that happened like a year ago or that first date or it's like we met or how they met, you know, that story of that meet cute that they have that they hold on to for so long. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they realize like, I'm only, <laughs> I love telling this story. But like their relationship is made up of a lot of fights and arguments and there's no compatibility or things like that. So I think you want pe like the peaks and valleys are nice. I do think too many people will justify the bad because they have a couple of good moments and they're and they and they overweigh the good to justify the bad. Well, also that. In that article, they were talking about how, like, that that energy that you have after a fight is, like, so amazing. And so I think, like, sometimes it's okay to, like, pick a little fight or, like, a little argument just to, like, spice things up a little bit because that feeling post-fight is, like, so hot. Have you dated a guy who's picked fights before? No. I have felt that where it's just like, I know you're just, you're, you're literally just trying to pick a fight. And I feel like you want to... You want to feel that energy. And is that something y'all y'all doing? No, I, I, I have dated guys that have like said like little like things like, oh my God, like and I you heard you saw it's, your it's ex just, last night or something like that. It's just to annoy you, just to get you rattled. Yeah, or to like find something out okay. that I haven't told them or something. Have you experienced know. that, Ellie and Amanda, from men you've dated? I don't think I've ever fought with a partner, if I'm being honest. Well, I feel like... In picking a fight, like I, I was like kind of having a conversation with my boyfriend last week where I was like, I can feel myself wanting to pick a fight. And it's just like, I think it's usually a sign that there's something more going on there. And when you first said men don't do that, I was like, yeah, because men don't fucking communicate, which is not fair. That's a generalization. But I do think yeah, in general. I, mean, I, I wouldn't include myself in that. But um, in general, I think like maybe women are a little bit more socialized to like communicate how they're feeling in the moment versus where like kind of like you talk about like the general men's breakup like instead of maybe having a conversation about the ways this relationship isn't working there's maybe the tendency to just like treat someone shittily until they do the yeah labor men will that. definitely sab like that's what men do they'll sabotage the shit out of it and be like just break up with me so I don't, yeah I don't have to communicate. that's so weak oh no, my it's gosh totally weak, but it's it's a common thing men to do all right kid you down to uh do some texting office hours yeah how's it going hi i am amber and i'm 32 how can we and help, Amber? I need help um, crafting a text to a guy that I don't, I haven't met in person, but uh, my aunt found him for me at a wedding. <laughs> Your aunt Ooh. found him yes. for you at a Good wedding. Good wing woman. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it was fun. Is that where we're at? Have you had any discourse or dialogue with him? Like, how did aunt find him and where, or like how, tell us from when aunt found him to where we are now. Give us a little okay. backstory. So, I'm, I guess I'm recently single. It's been like six months where I was like okay, yeah, three-year relationship, lived with him. So I just moved out. How's like your heart? It was in May. Um, it's, you know, I'm getting there. Okay. Your book has been helping. Thank you. Ah, um, you're the best. Love you it. read the book. Love it, love yeah. it. Oh it my good? gosh. Like, so good. Like, I started tearing up at the first line of the uh, get over them sections. Oh, I didn't, I, we, I, for, for the record, I had no idea she uh, had read the book when we... Yeah, <laughs> I didn't mention it at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the plug. Literally so so helpful. Um, so yeah, I wanted to say that. But um, yes, my aunt is like my wing woman. She's it's still in my hometown, you know, six hours away, like doesn't even live near me. But anytime she goes to a wedding, she is on a mission. She's like sending, 
it's it, she's at the rehearsal dinner scoping people out the then the day of she's sending me photos of like the pew of the church like people just guys sitting alone <laughs> guys sitting alone I'm like okay and at first like I was really taking this like to be like a joke I'm like okay this is never really gonna work out but whatever so I'll play around with it and I'm like sending her like cry face emojis and kind of laughing like you know 32 and up please or like you know an older you know guy would be great so last this was not this past saturday the one before that um she was at a wedding and i that saturday night i get a random text from a number saying like hi i'm with your aunt and um she says we should meet with like the high like wave emoji i was like okay like cool like maybe this worked and then like 10 minutes later i got a text from her uh, she must have gone back to the table and she's like, so did you get a text like from um, this man, uh, Brad? He, uh, so this is text- happening at the wedding. Yes. Like this was at the wedding she was at and it happened. Okay. So he, I, did, in this point, did you get I a picture know, of like, this guy? Do you, do you so get a- I did. Okay. She's sending me like, yes, blurry kind of photos. She's trying to sneak and take. Um, and I did, I sent them in, but yeah, there is a photo and he's very cute. I'm like, okay. 30, same age, you know, like, it's great. Like maybe I should respond. So I was like on a date at the time with somebody else here. Um, and then like he went to the bathroom, so I responded and I just said like, hi, you know, two um, exclamation marks. And then um, kind of like, LOL, my aunt. And then I said, like, she told me his name. So I said like his name and then question mark. And then this was like 1030 at night. Like he's at the wedding. He didn't respond. So we've had no communication since then. Um, Interesting. Wait, okay. So just... What are the texts that you have had with Brad so far? So Brad. really just, yeah, we're going Brad. It was just the hi, I'm with your aunt. Um, hi, I'm sent. with your aunt. From and that's yes, it? At the wedding. And she said we should meet. Yes. Okay. So. And, and you how, have you reached out and got it and, and, and then him not so reply? So it's the ball's in your court now. Yeah. So I did. I responded like that night. But. Um, you know what I would have loved for you to say? And like, it's fine. It's no big deal. And maybe, maybe I'm off here. But I would have loved when he reached out to you. For you to reply like, hey, can I text you back? I'm on a date right now. Oh, no. Yes. No. no. Yes. I, yeah, yeah N- but Nally wouldn't says, that have turned him away? I don't know. No. No, that was, no. It would not have turned him away. <laughs> <laughs> he so, would have been like, what? Yeah. Anyway, it, my friend has. You, this, you don't think he's, that, that okay, you guys got to, you know, I'm telling you. I don't know. I, I, I can't tell just if like, the pot. he was maybe just, just being nice. Pot. Like maybe he was just being nice. My aunt was like standing there, like <laughs> she showed him a how picture. How aggressive of me. is how 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 aggressive is Auntie Jane? Uh, well, I mean, she's not like she's not aggressive. I wouldn't say aggressive. She's like low key, you know. Like she would like probably sneak over to him. Just the two of them was probably like. So I heard. Well, she asked the the groom if he had any single friends, and like the groom sent him or sent her to Brad. Well, so. the easy option and the ego option would be like not to hit this guy up again because clearly yeah. like he's right. not like it's not at the top of his mind yeah but but we I love feel a shooter. Like you got you gotta shoot yeah you gotta That's shoot what I thought. like why not so the other thing is he he has a public instagram profile i found it because like mm. a friend had this app and i found his last name and he's like very attractive and okay all right he's very handsome he's Good very handsome i know like also, he's he's very Greek, clearly from his page. But um, my aunt said that she heard you, the wedding. Are, are you she's Greek? like really into Greek girls? No, I'm Italian, but I feel like Italians and Greeks are fond of yeah, each other. I think, yeah, they drive. Yeah, so strong fuck, like, yeah. strong fuckboy boy energy. Very yeah. strong fuck boy strong energy. Fuckboy energy. I know the first pick I like was worried about, but it's a sister because there was a comment that said sibling goals. I mean, listen, like as <laughs> I always say, so, one person's fuck boy is another person's future husband. I'm just. <laughs> I, I mean, think this is a little face tune moment. Yeah, I don't. He's know. sucking in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I love like. How tall do we think this guy is? Hard to tell. Five eleven. Yeah. yeah, it's going five eleven. It's definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's still got a shoe. Personally, yeah. Yeah. Here's what I need you to do first. I'm so glad you called and you're sharing this story. <laughs> but I also sense from you, you're weirdly a little bit more invested in, in the outcome than you should be. Okay, yeah. You don't know anything about this guy at all. Uh, aunt, want, you know, whatever. So I like know. you shooting your shot and it not going the way you, you, you want, like shouldn't, shouldn't. Like, yeah, your ego, whatever. But, like, he has so many reasons. From a guy's 
guys generally hate being set up and they hate like being set up by ants is just I know like <laughs> you are your your aunt didn't set you up in fact she probably like gave you gave him a lot of reasons to be very reluctant I say this because that those are all the reasons why you can tell you you got to shut the fuck up if it doesn't go the way you want right so like just have that mindset you have this is fun this is exciting this is adventurous and like, it does not matter if it doesn't go the way you hope, because like, you shouldn't hope anything. This is just more like, fuck it. Like, this is such, yeah. such this is such a fucking move. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right, so I, like, I need you to like, hear me on that and, right. and just realize But also that. like, you already have some icks to go off of. Like, if it doesn't work <laughs> out, like so many icks to tap into. Yeah. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. But like, what what do you think she should say in this initial text? It's definitely, we have to reference the ant. We got to. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. We might have to throw the ant out of the bus a little bit. I don't know. It's almost <laughs> like we have to. I feel. Because what I'm saying is, like, guys generally don't like to be set up, and they don't like... You have to, like, make it sound like you are on his team in a weird way. You know, right. you definitely mm -hmm. don't want this kind of, like... It's You got to catch him off guard. A man is usually pretty good at stuff like this, too. But, like, he can't be expecting this text. And it's... You're going to have to take some risks, too. Right. And again, since we have nothing to lose, risks exactly. are easy. You definitely don't want to <laughs> send the, like, so, you know... Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Right, I know my yeah. aunt thinks we should get together. Like, that's definitely don't do that. You have to be kind of bold here, right? You yeah, kind of have yeah. to be like, you should go out with me. And and then recognize, I know you're probably nervous because it's a setup kind of energy. But let me, you know, since I'm a closer or something like that, I'm, you know, <laughs> this is me letting you know mm -hmm. I'm worth your time or something like yeah. so Okay, uh, this is what I would do if I was exactly in this exact situation. I would hit the out of the blue FaceTime. Ooh. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Right? Wow. That's the move. Natalie, out of the Natalie's blue in FaceTime. the room. She nodded with a yes. <sighs> yeah. Ooh. If you can do it. Or if you don't want to do it like completely out of the blue, you could just text him like a basic text like, hey, <laughs> mm -hmm. hi. And then when he responds, then you hit the FaceTime. Just so, like so you know he's on his phone. Could she just text like, and say, like, hey, uh, would love to, like, chat live or something? Like, basically no. bring the... No, because that kid's takes point, away like, it's, it's, the, the, it's the boldness. Oh. Yeah. Well, what time of Then day it sounds like a that? Zoom meeting or something. You only know. get one shot, though. I know. Well, then, if he doesn't answer, you have to text coward. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. That's really good, Amanda. That mm -hmm. is good. Do you do it at like 5 p.m.? So it's not in the middle of the yeah, workday, like but it's not like yeah. a booty like, call? I feel yeah, like what time seven, do we call? End something day, on a weeknight. I think you send a, a courtesy, hey, hey, what's up? Right after he's like, nothing much. How about you? The classic response, boom, FaceTime. Does that not seem like even more clingy and creepy than just doing the FaceTime? It's like, I think you do the FaceTime. I don't, even, I don't think you send the text. Yeah. yeah. Really? Because it because gives if me the energy respond, of like... And then like, I think yeah. it, 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 this could snowball into like a swing, uh, like a... I would hit the... <laughs> I, that's what I said to begin with. I would hit the out of the blue Yeah, we're, 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 we're like, brainstorming. Okay. There's no bad ideas. Okay. Because I think and if, if he, he doesn't answer... All right, let's table text, like let's table FaceTime FaceTime, okay. a strong option. We might, but are, are are there any potential just like strong texting openers that we could send to pique his curiosity? The hard part is we like don't know anything about him. Yeah, we don't know what to like. Well, yeah, now we know well, everything about but him. But then is it creepy? Because well, I don't I, think you should say I was I on your Instagram. I shouldn't really know his Instagram. <laughs> yeah. right. like I. It would have to be. I think it needs to have something to do with like my aunt. It's a bit juvenile. Yeah. This is a bit juvenile, but so is calling him a coward. But it's also good. And also, like, you got to be sometimes. I wish I knew if this guy was like a sports fan or something, because you could just hit him yeah. with like some random sports fact and try to like argue with him about sports. Yeah. Uh, Likes to travel. I think he actually deleted. Where was the wedding? So the wedding was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Where she lives, that's where I'm from. And, and we know he lives in New York. He's a New Yorker. No, oh, so he lives in Philly, oh. but not far. Like it's a train ride away. Well, could you say something like pretty bold move to give your phone number to a rando at a wedding? Like 
and then like follow up question being like, do you make other biz? I don't know. Like I- I'm <laughs> someone, someone help me. <laughs> do you have business cards? Like, yeah. It could be like, so are you down to try long distance? And then no. I think that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, but like, or okay, then then just be like, when are you visiting New York? Right, or like, like really, I would just like to get drinks, or even just like meet. Okay, what if? Can, can, oh no, oh no, I was just gonna say. I mean, we we recommend this a lot, but like, do we go the old like send a spot or like drop the name of a spot you no, want to go to? He's, he lives in Philly. It's like the living in Philly. I think Philly. is a very important note that we need to consider. But it's, are you it's going to Philly ride. for any purposes? I mean, I don't have plans to, but I I could mm, at any any weekend. Okay. What if, I do think you need to be less excited about him. I'm just saying you don't know him, and I can he, I can yeah. see it. You're like I you're like I could go any weekend. No, you can't. You're very busy. True. <laughs> Even if you're you're right. You know, like, yeah. and I'm, I, you know, listen, I get it. It's only been six months. Try to have fun with this. Really? Like this guy, like as Kit said, has a lot of potential X. Like there's, I could go through a lot. I could spend the next 20 minutes making some fairly accurate guesses on like bad habits this guy mm-hmm. might have, you know, because we all have them, you know, read that but everyone's anyone annoying who's... section. Everyone, but everyone, every guy that's public on social media, there's cringe stuff to see. Yeah, 100%. Yes. Yeah. Do you Everyone. like dancing? Yeah. I like, okay, maybe this is like too high key for like a first date, but something like, be like, bummed I missed you on the dance floor. Like, would you like, would you want to go out this weekend? Like there won't be an open bar and like two people promising eternal love, but like, you know, like whatever, like something like to kind of like reference the wedding, mm-hmm. but be like. Let's make plans. I don't know. No. That's too but intense. That's, that's, like a, that's like a love story, I feel like. <laughs> I think you almost have to like throw gr- auntie under the bus. Isn't yeah. it like aunt nuts? That's what I was you know? thinking. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Or like, or I, think, I just, I'm I kind just of think, think we should like, FaceTime him. I, I would either hit the FaceTime or like, okay. if you're, if you happen to be going to Pittsburgh at any point, this is a person that like, if you're going to visit Philly and you already have plans, hey, I'm going for this game this weekend. If you're around, what if she sends him a text that's like, there's an open roster spot for like a Philly guy? I'm curious. Like, make it, got, give him some fuckboy <laughs> energy. Okay. You know, yeah. you're like, you're basically saying that like there's an open roster spot for like to have a hookup in Philly and you're like willing to try him out. Something along those lines. I don't know. Is that That's your too vibe? Aggressive. I mean, not really. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Again, I don't, I'm not saying you do this. I'm just like, you're clearly not. That's kind of, mm-hmm. it's it's the joke. It's okay. just, it's going to get yeah. him, it's going to get him to reply. And what I'm, you know, because like I, hey, my aunt introduced you like when you're in New York, let's get a drink. He just might be like, I don't know what this is. Someone ran randomly sends yeah. a text and and says that shit. I, I'm assuming they're kidding, but I want to meet the person who came up with that like line. Yeah. It, that's the premise, you know. You could be like, so when do you want to meet the rest of my family? Yeah, that's not bad. I like that. <laughs> it's got to be a little bit outrageous. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? I think, so. yeah. I actually, I kind of like that. I do like that. I think that would be, like if I got that text, I would respond. I think that would be funny. Well, if he doesn't, then fuck him. Again, yeah, if, if this guy doesn't, it, yeah. like, you, when you send this text, you know, there's other people who call him for texting office hours who are like, oh, let's, is he going to, like, hang on the phone, we'll see if it replies. Not you. You're like, you just, yeah, there's yes. no wondering. He has every reason not to reply. We're trying to give you, like, come up with a reason that makes him, like, go, like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm bored. Let's see where this goes. Like, that's that's what we're trying to, because he has every right. reason you're just not, a strange person yeah. who, like, aunt said to go, yeah, well, yeah, like, you know? I, so it's fine, too. I'm glad she did. He was did. just being nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's totally fine. This is but fun. But I think that that would be a good text because then also it gives him the opportunity to be like, oh, I'm coming to New York this weekend or right. whatever. So that you guys can make, like, an actual plan. Mm-hmm. So do we like that better than randomly FaceTiming? Because I'm curious... <sighs> That we just try it just to see what happens. I feel like pull out the random FaceTime later, a little bit later. Okay. Yeah. Like let's let's get a text convo going and then pull out the random face the random FaceTime always a good one to throw in there. I do like that. All right. So we're gonna go with when do you wanna meet the rest of my family? <laughs> Yeah, so when do you want to meet the rest now, of my family? <laughs> I like it. When do I send that? Like, what time of day? Does it matter? This evening. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Like, five, six. Like, he's probably home, you know, chill night. Is there a follow-up? Like, when do you want to re- meet the rest of my yeah. family? And then, like, a joke that goes, like, where? What? LOL. <laughs> 
Yeah, to like <clears throat> bring it back to my aunt. Yeah. He, he will remember, but. No exclamation points, no question marks. No emojis. So yeah. when, yes, okay. no emojis. Just, so no when do you want to meet the rest of my family? LOL. Lowercase okay. on the LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Very particular. Got it. I can do that later today. I think when is fine. Yeah. Now? At what point is more assumptive? <laughs> you need to start it out with so. So. So yeah. when? So. You, okay. So at what point or so when? Yeah. So when? So yeah. When. So when do you want to meet the rest of my family? That's it. That's what we're going with. We've like. Yeah. Do I? You've decided. Put like dot 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 after the nope. so. No. Nope. Nope. Or just. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, you, 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 the energy is he has to, he should, it's, he's stupid not to. Yeah. That's the energy you're putting out there. It's just like, you're insane not to reply. Obviously, and we understand this is just a fun, crazy thing, but like yeah. when you're, when you're speaking to him and we were texting him, you want him to read it as I, I have to respond. This person is like super confident and, and like, her, her, like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, not like, please like me. It's like, you're stupid not to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. missing out. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let us know like what happens. I will. Yeah, please DM will. me if he responds, when he responds. Okay, I will. Um, oh, and let us know uh, in, in addition okay. to DMing Kit. Um, oh, I will. And do not let this bother you at all if he doesn't yeah. reply. Okay. I, I really have no expectations. I'm th okay. It's just, it's been, I've just started, you know, getting back into like the dating you know, scene. So it's Have it's some fun. fun. Keep referencing yeah. the book. Uh, thank you for reading it. I really appreciate it. And uh, tell all your friends. Awesome. I will. Thank All right. you. All right. Take care. Bye. How's it going? Hey. What's your name? My name is Paige and I'm 28. How can we help Paige? So a couple weeks ago, I matched with a guy on a dating app who happens to be my first boyfriend, first kiss, first date from 15 years ago. Wow. Ooh. Um, yeah. This is so fun. All right. Fun. We're... You caught our attention. Um, <laughs> so we matched. Obviously, I swiped just because I know him. We've been friends on social media for 15 years. We went to the same high school, all that. Like, we've never just really talked. We've, like, liked each other's pictures every now and then. So whatever. So I swiped because I knew him. And uh, so we started talking, and he was like, well, let's go get drinks. Well, I couldn't tell from the text messages, like, if it was a date, if it was just us catching up. Well, it ended up being a date because I got a kiss at the end. So that answered that question. Okay. Uh, and it was really good. Like we stayed out, we talked till 5 a.m. And then the next, I guess the same morning at like 8 a.m., he texted me and the texts were flirty. Um, I think I sent those in, like they were really flirty. But then he didn't talk to me for over a day. He didn't respond. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I wrote in, I was like, okay, well, this is kind of weird. And so then he did text back and things have kind of changed. We, his, I guess his, dynamic or whatever it was different. The texts were shorter. Well, then some stuff happened. Um, and I was actually in his area, uh, his part of town. And I said, Hey, like, I'm going to be in your, in your area. He was like, cool, let's hang out. So we hung out and we talked like talking. It was great. We caught up again for multiple hours. And he was like, well, let's hang out again in a couple of days. So we hung out to watch a show, um, at my place this time. And Mind you, I'm getting kisses after these dates. So I keep thinking like something is there. But then ever since the last one, he doesn't text me first. And it's not till like eight o'clock at night because I'll text him because I really like this guy. And then the texts are only like five to 10 texts piece. And then I don't hear from him. And I haven't heard from him the last like day and a half. But he at the last time that we saw each other, he said, let's do this every week. Let's watch a show that comes out every week. I was like, yeah, that sounds really good. Cool. But I just, yeah. I can't tell. I don't know. I, I don't know. I like the guy. We get along on a lot of different levels, not just because we have that history or anything, but I don't know. Like, do I text him? And All right. I, I think <laughs> it's communication hour. Yeah. Like there's got to be a talk. And it's honestly great because you guys have this history already. So you're comfortable like communicating with him. I think a little bit more than if this was happening with like a new guy, you'd probably be like, oh, I don't know if I even want to like bring this up. But now you kind of have the out because you can be like, you know, this is weird for me. Like, it's bringing up a bunch of memories like from when we were younger and all of these feelings are coming up for me. Can we do a dramatic reading? I made it. Had to stop for gas on the way. LOL. LOL. All good. And well, I'm glad you made it home safely. Smiley emoji face. I'm still kind of in shock. Three, three emoji faces. Ooh. Clap. 
emojis. You're using too many emojis. I know. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of emojis in so, this. He does them too. So yeah. Uh, of what? LOL. Of meeting up after all this time. LOL blows my mind. Yeah. I'm. I'm. LOL. I'm been. In sh I'm. I'm a bit in shock. We talked outside the bar for like three hours. More emojis. Shit, me too. I was not expecting that, lol. At a very nice time, though. I was, I had a lot of fun catching up with you, emoji. I did too. Emoji. <laughs> it's so funny, like, reading these texts. Sorry if the kiss at the end there was a bit much. I just kind of wanted to do it for the last couple of hours there, lol. Really? Honestly, I had been trying to figure out out if you were into me or not. So I definitely didn't mind it at all, LOL. LOL, well, I'm glad we did. All right, so first note there, it, for the rest of your life, no matter how this goes, never say, I didn't think you would like me or I'm surprised you liked me or oh, really? I mean, if you think that that's fine, do not tell him that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, have the I was the also a couple, couple beers in. That's fine. <laughs> but just, I'm just still giving you the note. I'm not, Fair. listen, if you fuck up, it's not the end of the world. But going forward, please like have the you know more of the yeah I'm, I was, what took you so long kind of energy rather than the i can't believe you like me energy okay you know? all right and then uh, and then you said me okay me too then you reached out good afternoon hey hey sorry for not getting back to you yesterday it was kind of a weird day lol you guys why are you guys lolling all the time you're not yeah you guys were really that's laughing that's us though like the entire time whether we're talking or texting i kid you not <laughs> there's that's just how it is. Okay. Okay. But between those, it was like a day and a half where he was just like, it was a weird day. I was like, um, okay. Cause we've talked before about my last relationship ended because of a lack of communication. Uh -huh. would go days without texting me. And so this kind of made me mad. I was like, we just talked about this. Here we are. Yeah. But still it. early. I, 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 I want you to stop saying I like him. You can say I like him so far <laughs> or I'm interested in okay, him so or this is exciting. You know, but you know so little about this guy. And I think you're doing the very common thing that we've all done is that you had a really nice date. So fun to talk to someone and in, like into the night. Yeah, but know. they also like there's always going to be those first love feelings there. Sure. Which is risky to yeah. like to. Yeah. I, I, but do you are you saying that as like a beware of that or or is that I, I'm just saying like it makes you feel way further along yes. in a relationship later in life because you are remembering what it was like yeah. you when have you a, first met. And, and it's a great story. I mean, you're mm -hmm. probably thinking there's a there's a part way deep down or uh, maybe way deep down, maybe it's in the forefront of your brain, but like if this works out, how romantic and mm -hmm. fun and like, you're, you're like, what a great thing to talk about at our wedding, you know, shit like that. It's just, you're susceptible to that. Right. And so, you know, it does, it sounds like things are going fairly well. Like, I think early on in dating, the thing that you should pay most attention to is consistency in progress. Right. And, and you know, and, and even if that consistency is slow, and even if that progress is slow, as long as that happens, you know, and I think right now it sounds like what I'm hearing, I could be wrong, but like, you have a certain expectations of how consistent and how fast he should go. And he's not meeting that and you're getting in your head as a result. Because I, I'm not seeing or hearing like a lot of reasons to be like, oh, you know, he doesn't like, the, the guy made a plan to hang out with you on a weekly basis to watch something. I don't yeah. think a lot of guys do that if they're not uh, interested. It's because of his work schedule. He works overnights and then uh -huh. he has like, but he has a six hour break in the middle and yeah. those two nights that we hung out i just happened to be off the next day so it worked out but we haven't really hung out on a weekend when i'm off kind of thing so it's almost like i don't know i don't know what he does on the weekends i know how, long, how many times have you been out me, with him? uh once out in public and then once at his house once at my house so okay and how long ago did you guys match mm, like yeah, it's still pretty early. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like if you didn't, if you just met this guy for the first time, on, on, if you just matched with this guy on a dating app and you weren't really liking his like communication style, it's just like pissing you off. Like it sounds like it is kind of, then you would probably just like move on. But I think this is a great opportunity because you guys have the history that you can be like, okay, should we try dating again? Yeah. I mean, I don't know because just when we're in person, it's, it goes so well. I know he's dating other people because he's told me that. 
And I think that's what worries me the most. Yeah. Uh, but you have no reason. Yeah. I, I get why you're worried, but you really have no reason to worry. It sounds like you have definitely decided that you liked him before you actually should. And I, I, I know you like as, <laughs> a, aspects about him. Well, I mean, you've only, you've, you've, you reconnected him after 15 years, three weeks ago, and you've been on two dates. So unless you think there's not much to him, then you clearly have a lot to learn about him. You know, and so right. I would love you for you to focus more on, on the stuff that you have yet to learn rather than fixate on like, it was great that you had one good date and that you have you had good banter and that that's something to build on. That's awesome. But right now, and he's been, it sounds like he's been fairly upfront. I mean, he's told you he's been dating. Okay. That's not everyone's that upfront. It sounds, and he made some plan like this whole, like what that, that thing he said, like, let's do this every week. What was that again? Yeah. There's a show that comes out and he was like, we should hang out every day on this week or every, every okay. week on this day kind of thing. When the show that's comes out, that's a plan to hang out with you, you know? And so have you guys hooked up yet? No. Okay. So don't keep, don't, keep not hooking up for a while and like use that time to see if they follow through with hanging out and Keep getting to know him, you know, right now you're focusing on what you're not getting rather than what you're getting. You know, you, like you said, like, well, he's not texting me on the weekends. You know, I get that like, right. You know, this this idea that you were like, well, I mean, I got a date and I like him. You're, and I've been you before, right? I'll meet you. You're just like, well, I would, you know what I'd like? I'd like for us to text yeah. all day long. And I'd love us for us to play this or that, you know, and I'd love for him to like check in. And I get that. But right right now, that's not where he's at. That doesn't mean he can't get there. And, you know, it doesn't mean he doesn't like you. He just, he's more like, I, he's probably thinking, well, I had a nice time. He might not even be thinking about the fact that you met 15 years ago. Maybe that's not nostalgic for him at all. I, I don't know. But he brings it up a lot more than I do. <laughs> okay. There's no way. Like, I'm just your saying, first love, you said it, he was your first kiss. My first kiss, my first date first boyfriend but i wasn't his so i think that may be why i'm overthinking it because it was a first for me yeah not a first for him you really gotta like you gotta start fresh with this guy in your head too like how you the how you met could really fuck you up yeah yeah but you're also being like met with the reality of who he is now and yeah, again, yeah. you just have to decide if you like that person. Because like you'll it a always lot more love than back then. <laughs> yeah, like you'll always love that that version of him that's in your head. And may it might honestly, like I have this with my first love too, where like every few years we'll like go see each other again. And it never works out because like that he's just like a little character in my head of like what young love is. The first and that's love. Yeah, very hard up. to recreate. Yeah. yeah. I just don't even is there a text to send this guy right now? I don't know because I and one part of me, I really wanted to just text him and be like, where do you see this going? But I know that that's not something I should do because I don't want to freak him out just because I'm overthinking things or if I should And text and if him. you've ever listened to this show, even if, even if yeah. you are ready, you don't ask, you just you would say, "Hey, I'd like to see more of you or I want X Y or Z." You don't you don't ever ask him what he thinks because that, that just immediately tells him that they're in control, that they're, you're waiting on them, that you've already decided. It means a bunch of things. And you saying what you want, well, he might not want it, just sounds attractive. It just sounds confident. It's just like, this is what I want. But anyways, I don't think you're there yet either. I don't think you should be able to decide that now. It's too early. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the other thing was if I were to text him and like form a date that's not watching this show. I don't know if I should do that or not. To see I like that. Be down, like on a weekend rather than just. you have just, an idea of a date you'd want to do? Sort of. Uh, there's this bar that like uh, downtown in our city that they have a bunch of board games. And you can go and you can drink and you can have food and you can play board games. Because so our first date was at an arcade. The beer arcade kind of thing. Yeah. So. That's cute. So pick that. And then I want you to ask a ton of questions. Like like your next date should almost it should he should feel like you're interrogating him a little bit not a lot but i really want you to try to find out something surprising about him that isn't like talking about you know i don't know what you guys talked about on your first date but i think you know be afraid of, uh, pretend he's hiding like we all we're all hiding things you know in a sense and get him to admit something that you have to be like mm, okay mm, ick not ick, wait but this like, is such a good strategy i've never like taken this on but then like you are in so power. in power yeah. I mean, he's so, kind of admitted something that's not really the greatest thing that I would want to hear. What was but, that? But uh, that he's cheated on a couple people. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A couple. A couple. Not just one. So was he a, a player? I, was like, I would. 
I would uh, I would I would get more curious if I were you and ask some more questions. I think your next date that's a that's a big red flag. Does I know. he? W- and, and what were your follow up questions to that? Uh, him and on one of them, I asked. I was like, "Why?" And he said, "Well, because she cheated on me first. That was a terrible like, answer on his part. What? That's to concern you. <laughs> mm-hmm. It did. Did you ask him how uh, do you feel about that? How does that make you feel about yourself now? Yeah, I I did ask him. I was like, "So would you do that now or?" was just this just a thing because that's what your dynamic was with her and he was like no i don't think i would ever do it now and i was like you don't think or you don't know he was like it would depend on the person that i'm with okay Mm. that's the honest answer he's capable of cheating again i'm telling you right now yeah it doesn't matter who the like other person is that you're with because it It comes from insecurity he chose to cheat on on his past partner had nothing to do with what whether she cheated on him or not so Well, his answer was, I think revenge is a a suitable way to communicate my problems in a relationship. Makes sense. And listen, you know, I'm not saying run. I don't know this guy, but that's definitely a major red flag. And if nothing else, it should get you to like pull back on the you just wanting him to like you and being pissed he's not texting you on the weekends and focusing on all the things that you're not getting from him rather than focus on like, I need to know more about this guy before I waste more energy and, and more of my time on him because it's valuable. And I'm really curious about this cheating thing. And so I have other questions. And like like I said before, that your next date should be like your goal is to find out another thing about him. What other annoying thing can I get him to admit to? Deep, dark secrets. Yeah. Yeah. A little uh, trauma and then, dump if he, session. If he gets a little defensive, be like, hey, listen, man, we we all have our warts. I'm just trying to find out what yours are. Put him on, put him on his heels. Like most people aren't doing that. This guy probably early on is very much in power, in control. He's making moves. He's just like, let's plan a, you know, like let's watch movies. And you're just like, and he's used to people getting excited for for him just giving a little bit of his time to people. But if you start really like, you know, and in, interrogating them and like without like, you know, just be like, hey, I just want to, know, you know, my time's valuable. I just want to know, you know, I'm curious about you. If he gets defensive, then the, if he can't answer these questions, he's either incapable or uninterested. And that should matter to you, you know, right. but like someone who's really in, at least interested in you will be like, you know what? I just this person deserves my honesty. I'll tell them I want to be vulnerable and keep asking why. Well, why did you do this or why does it what does this mean to you now? You know, you know, what's a good opener to that session? Start asking questions. Okay. <laughs> just randomly. Sure. Just be like, you know what? I. I haven't, we haven't learned a lot about each other. Maybe you can make it one of those like games of like, you know, there's the, like, those, what's those, the those, worst thing. There's those games called, yeah, like a random. What's like random, biggest regret. Yeah. Regrets. What's a really bad habit you have, you know? And he's like, why are you asking these questions? I'm like, hey, listen, we all, we're all annoying. So I'm just trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out if I can live with your annoying. Okay. That's fair. Like, it's weird. We're, guys are fucked up, but like we respond to shit like that, especially if we like you, you know? Like, we want to prove ourselves to you. It's when we feel like we have nothing to prove, we get bored and complacent. So the more you. I've never thought of that. Yeah. The more you ask and the more you like, if, you know, if he's worth your time and, and when they can't answer those questions anymore, it either means they're either in, like, they don't want, that means they don't want you to find out who they really are. And then that means that's when you run. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's just going to be very open about it. I don't think Great. hide anything. Good. Well, good. Then do that. Then you'll learn about him, but also listen to his answers. Don't just get like excited that he's being honest. Right. You know, oh, he told me he's cheated. Like, oh, what an honest guy, you know. That's not what <laughs> I thought. Why did he like, cheat? Oh. Well, you know, <laughs> listen to his answers. And then and then and then when you get done, reevaluate the conversation you had after the date. Not, you know, listen and and to what he's saying. Then yeah, shoot him a text uh, and see if he wants to hang out and make an exception. Like I would love for him to like plan something outside of when he slotted you in because I'm worried that he's slotted you into his schedule and I need him to be able to like adjust his schedule for someone he's willing to prioritize. That's kind of my thought too. I was like, it's kind of weird that you just kind of put me in there on your break kind of thing um, rather than yeah. taking a weekend day or something. Totally. You just have to change, like right now, first you have to change your mindset before you do any of this stuff and realize and have these like actual conversations with yourself. It's like, I don't care how we met. I don't care that we were connected. I don't care it's my first date, but like he's in, he has changed in 15 years and I need to figure out how. And what I, I, I like a lot of things. I've, I've had some fun with them. I'm, this is cool. This is exciting. But also the guy's a cheater. So yeah. I need to learn more. But I do like what I know so far. But let's find out some more stuff and have some fun with it, you know? I'll try. <laughs> All right. Find out how he's gross. He's definitely gross. Men are gross. Yeah, I have no doubt. <laughs> he's got bad habits. He's got icks. 
I know he's got bad habits. Yeah. Know that. So I want you to focus on that if you could, please. <laughs> and the board games date, I really like well, that. That's great. That idea. And you can do that while playing games. Yeah. That's a great date for conversation. We don't play games, but we do play board yeah. games. That's true. Yeah, and I when you ask so them really. out, you can say, I know this great place where we can play games, but not with each other. Or yeah. something like that. Oh, that's yeah. clever. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what do you mean? Okay. I'm like, huh, I was, you know, something like this. See if you can take a joke. All right. Okay. Keep us posted on this one. I'm, I really want to find out what you were able to learn and where did this go. Okay. Yeah, me too. Think of yourself as like this detective now. I'm but this is like things you do, you things you do in person in a conversation with them, not on the internet. Right. Do it to their faces. FBI agent. Yes. To their faces. <laughs> Far more effective and intimidating in the best possible way. I need to do. I I I feel like I need to do this. Report back, kid. Yeah. Yeah. I get so choked up in person though, so I think that's Some, gonna be my problem. You you can, you can do it. These are just they're just they're just talking. Like pretend you're interviewing him. Yeah. This was always All you have to interviews. do is think about. You have to think about how. You no, know, but yeah, but you're interviewing them. It's not the other way around. You're you're in power. Yeah. You're, you could even like say that if you f felt really awkward about it. You could even be like, okay, can I interview you for a few minutes? Yeah. <laughs> After okay. further review. I don't want to judge you, but you have cheated. I have some more questions. And you mm -hmm. just... And then you go Barbara <laughs> Walters on his yeah. ass. Pull up, pull up the notes app. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Serious? I truly, I mean, have some fun with it, you know? I think you you have nothing to lose here. And you you think you have a ton to lose, and you don't. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I've just been single for so long. And then he came along, and I was like, ah. I hear you. That's interesting. So. But you're still only 28, which I know in your head... Is not what you think or feel, but I promise. And I don't know if you got this book yet, but I'm telling you, it might. I, I might. I wrote it. I wrote it for you. I actually did order it. So did, did you get it yet? No, not yet. Okay. Well, read that first, <laughs> and then and then go on a date with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> might change your mind. I think you're gonna be Maybe. great. You're gonna be great. Um, but the fact that you have been single for a long time and you're getting a little anxious about it, it's good that you recognize it. It's good to name it. But like, don't negotiate with yourself what, with what you know you deserve just because you're just gotten a little bored. Go on a date because you're bored. Be like, hey, I'm bored. Fuck it. I'll go on a date. But you still have low expectations. You right. know, I've gone on date, dates that I was bored. My, my friends would be like, why are you going on a date? I'm like, I don't know. It's fucking Wednesday. Who gives a shit? You yeah. Know? Like, but like low stakes. I wasn't like, oh, my God, this has to go well. I was just like, I don't know. Whatever. It gets me out of the house. You could do some more low, you could throw some more low stakes like dating app dates in there too. Yeah. Yeah. I've tried uh, continuing to talk to people on dating yeah. apps and everything, but just, I hate dating apps. I know. <laughs> yeah. And just take breaks sometimes too. Yeah. No one to take oh, breaks. I, I okay. delete them. <laughs> All right. You're going to, I know you're going to be fine. But uh, as far as this guy goes, we have a lot to learn. So go, yeah. go find out and report back. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Okay. All right, take care. All right, thanks. All right, Later. Bye -bye. Kit, thanks for coming. Thanks for what a having pleasure. me. You were this great. Is so fun. So much fun to talk with you. Please let my audience know where they can find you, uh, follow you, any other projects you're working on. Now is the time to. At Kit Keenan on Instagram and TikTok. And follow me, make my recipes, tag me in your remakes. Are you making recipes? Yeah. You cooking? Yes. That's awesome. Go on because like this is not toxic content. This is like wholesome. Yeah, like, no, I'm going to go check it out now. Get in the kitchen. Nice. Honestly, turn your phone off after that. Get in the kitchen. Okay. Make something. I love that. Yeah. Follow Kit. She's doing great stuff. Thanks for listening, guys. Next week, Tino, finally, we're finally doing it. He's coming in on Sunday to record. It's dropping next, next week and uh, should be interesting. Bye. All right, everyone, if you're hearing this, I need your help right now between October 11th and the 13th. You can vote for the Vile Files for Pop Podcast of 2022 for the People's Choice Awards. This award means a lot to me. I want to be able to share it with all of you. I love you guys. And me, Allie, and Amanda would be super grateful if you take the time to vote for the Vile Files over the next three days. You can vote 25 times a day. So I know a lot of you uh, listen to the show and talk about the show with your friends. Tell your friends. Let's all get together. Let's win this for all of us. I'm super excited. I can't wait to hopefully share this with you. So I hope you guys take the time. Link to register will be in the show bios. I'll put it on my social as well. I know it takes a few clicks and a little bit of your time. So I really appreciate you guys doing it. Again, 25 times a day over the next three days. I love you all. I hope we win this together. And I can't wait to share it with you. Enjoy. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.